Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I want to talk about the new Space Marine Codex. Now I don't have the Space Marine Codex in front of me. I'm just going off information that has been posted around on social media sites, um, other people's YouTube videos like Hellstorm Wargaming. They did a great little review on theirs and there's awesome you know, other channels out there who've also did their reviews. So I'm just getting all that information and I'm looking at it, what I've seen at this moment in time and what I like, what I dislike, are the changes good, are they bad, all that kind of stuff, etc. Everything in this video is my own opinion. Some things that I may dislike, you may love. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. So let's jump in and uh, let's get talking. So as a whole, I think the Codex is better than the predecessor. Now, the way I'm looking at this is in terms of of balance. If we look at the old Space Marine Codex, that was the last Space Marine Codex, that was the heyday of Space Marines. It was like the Great Crusade. We were top tier. We were out there in the galaxy purging the Xenos, purging the heretics. Well, there was no heretics during the Great Crusade, but you know what I mean. We, we were the top of the pile. Now, this Codex has balanced that out a lot more. There's some stuff that was so broken in the previous codex, like with the chapter mass and all the rerolls and everything like that, which we'll get into a second. You know, uh, the executioner tanks and people spamming them. Um, main culprit right here. Hold my hands up. Sorry, guys. You know, I just... The, the DACA took control of me. But anyway, let's start with some of my dislikes to this codex. And I'm not going to say hate or anything like that. It's just stuff that I don't like. And um, hopefully it will be FAQ'd maybe to change it um, to benefit the Space Marine Codex more. Because I think there's still in some imbalances in the codex. Number one is certain squads. So the Eradicators. I see the Eradicators as a fantastic unit. Probably one of the best units in the entire codex. And I was really surprised that you could take up to a maximum of six of them that means potentially people can bring up to 18 eradicators in one list yes you can have the arguments about well is it worth the point cost is it worth this is it worth that but the amount of damage they can put out don't forget they're in gravis armor so the toughness five free wounds they can you know take a bit of a beating and they can put out all those melter shots for me i think it would have been more balanced if they actually would have just put them in as a free man squad and when you look at other stuff like um, the bikes for example the outriders i would have much preferred them to have six in a squad and the eradicators to have a minimum well sorry to, to to have a maximum of three in a squad i think it would have made a lot more sense to um do it that way around as a fan of the aggressors huge fan of the aggressors i'm nearing 15 aggressors at the moment bolt storm gauntlets bolt storm gauntlets with imperial fists are a match made in heaven i have to say now they've lost a couple of abilities on this one the first ability is that if they stand still they no longer get to shoot twice which is like oh no i've lost all my daca kind of thing and also if you advance with them what used to happen in uh, the previous edition if you advance with them then you didn't get a minus one to your blizzard skill they've lost that ability now as well so if you do advance with them they can still shoot with their assault weapons and stuff but then they're at the ballistic skill of four plus now um i would have preferred to just lose one of these i i think it would have made sense if they took away the standing still one because again it, it's probably coming to balance with everything that's coming in but um looking at the other one where you could walk forward um, and advance and still have the same ballistic skill i think that is there's, there's nothing wrong with that i think that's what made the unit um one of the pickable units actually on the battlefield that you can go forward and still have this ballistic skill which is kind of decent strategy wise it seems that we've lost fury of the machine spirit it, which was my favorite um stratagem uh one was it one one or two command points if i recall correctly and basically what you could do with this one if you had a repulsor on the field so you know repulsor or repulsor execution and stuff like that and um, if it was destroyed you could either auto explode it so if he was surrounded by enemies and he's like you know what screw it i'm just gonna blow up and kill as many people as i can i'm gonna take them out of me you don't have to roll that six for a chance or you could shoot one last time and see you know if you maybe can take that tank down that took you down or something like that that has been slung out now so we can't have that anymore so it, it, it seems to me that they're focusing more on a different side of the game because before 8th edition or the previous um sorry the like the latest space marine codex because we've had that bloody many now so the latest space marine codex for 8th edition it seemed that it was very geared to certain types of lists and stuff where this one feels a lot more balanced where it, 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 it wants you to take a tank but it also wants you to take more things in your list as well to balance it out and have a more balanced gameplay and i would say a more fun gameplay experience as well anyway onto the things i really like about this codex uh, first things first the core word um I was really surprised that some units received the core word, 
which I, I personally thought, no, there's no way they're getting the core keyword. So Dreadnoughts, all the Dreadnoughts have the core keyword, which is fantastic. I love Dreadnoughts. I've got five Dreadnoughts in my army at the moment, thinking of even buying some more, painting them up as different chapters uh, for my last wall, maybe, you know, making some fancy, like, you know, you know, chaplain dreadnoughts just for the rule of cool and stuff like that so it's nice to see that they're getting um some love with the core keyword they also have an ability where they can reduce damage by one on their stuff as well and when you, if you add that to like dreadnoughts no longer suffer um the ballistic skill penalty when they move with their weapons now is 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 a massive factor i can definitely see dreadnoughts being like high stonks in this edition like having like dreadnoughts in your army helping and assisting your army push up the battlefield and i, I love it because i love dreadnoughts i think they're a great unit they're great in the law and they just look absolutely badass on the battlefield and another interesting thing as well and this is not really related to the video but a friend pointed this out to me today is that there's no neophytes or crusade squads mentioned in the space marine codex as well what does that mean for Black Templars, does that potentially mean that just maybe, maybe there is a glimpse of hope on the horizon that the Black Templars may actually get a supplement in this edition? Really, fingers crossed for that, because if that does happen, I think that would be absolutely massive for the Crusading Sons of Dawn, and I think there's going to be a lot of happy people um, around the interwebs um, if that comes off. And I know we've talked about this um, a, a couple of days ago, because they did an article dedicated to this now, but after seeing it all, um, sometimes in action, because I've been watching um, some Battle Report channels who have been, you know, uh, fighting with the new space ring codex which has been fantastic to watch the whole chapter command rework now like um you know a captain for chapter master is plus 40 points and all that kind of stuff um i love the way that this works now um and one thing i was concerned about is like um you can only take one captain and one lieutenant in a list and stuff um and it was you know it's, it's come out since like the codex has come out is that if you have a, a chapter master in your list then you can have a captain in that list as well because he's no longer a captain he is a chapter master so you can have a um, a chapter master captain and um, a lieutenant or is it two lieutenants in your list if I'm not mistaken so that's pretty nice but I, lo I love the changes to like what they did to like uh, the chief librarian the chief um, ancient the master of the forge the master of sanctita all these awesome little cool abilities that goes with it now it actually feels like they are designed for that title that rank that you actually pay for as well you know in points as well it's no longer um um you know uh, command points and stuff like that you pay for these in points and it feels like when you have that chap now on the battlefield he really is that character it's not just a little title or anything that you know they have abilities that will affect them because they are the chief apothecary you know they are the chief librarian the chief um uh, sorry the chapter ancient and stuff like that it really, really is an awesome thing to add to the game i love that chapters now can get access to more stuff for example the blood angels can get access to centurions and um, i put this down to a purely business move gw wants to sell more products sell more models and the way to do that is open it up i would have loved in this edition if they would allow primaries to get into stuff like land raiders storm ravens and stuff but balance wise that may be a tad broken but in law they can but in the tabletop they can't so that's why i see it, it, it it's 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 solely down to um a profit i think because they still want to push the actual new tanks and stuff like that but also balance wise as well because you know land raider crusaders with like primaries pumping out of them would just be um a glorious sight for me anyway and on the subject of tanks and also you know some of the new models that are coming out as well like we've actually seen like the proper stats now with you know all like the new gladiator tanks and um i do like some of them i think some of them will probably not work with my play style like i've been saying through this the like the thing i'm kind of seeing now is that maybe more troop based armies is probably like the thing to go because taking objectives getting more stuff done and when the space marines can have access to like you know heavy intercessors intercessor um uh, sorry intercessors phobos armor veteran intercessors is another uh, new introduction that is no longer a stratagem now that is um, a points cost to the intercessors so you're actually paying for that troop choice instead of again in stratagems and stuff so um the, the way i'm seeing it is that maybe um like the tank spam is has finally had its day with the space marines i'm not saying it may come around full circle in another day um, but the way i'm looking at this now building my army in the future is definitely doing it a lot more infantry based rather than like the big heavy tanks at the back pumping out shots and i have seen some of the stuff like uh, people have been mentioning about the apothecary where if you um, do it properly like with all the keys abilities and stuff you can technically bring back like an atv back with full wounds which i find absolutely hilarious with things like that i definitely see them being faq'd because i don't think the balance is really there tonight i, th I think there's going to be a lot of faqs going forward um, the problem 
is at the moment, and uh, this is what I've been talking about with my friends, is that no one's really playing that much. I'm not saying that no one's playing the game. I'm sure there's tournaments going on, but the, the, the general feedback as a whole community is that people are not playing with each other, so they can't really give that much feedback to it. You know, Of course, there's tournament players out there who are doing the tournaments and stuff, but like for myself and the people I know and the people around my area, we can't go out and play the game because all the gaming halls I know of are closed because it's you know the covid and everything like that's going on so we can't actually go out and test all this and stuff in theory we can do it on tabletop simulator but i've been saying to myself lately is that um nothing i, I just want to go out and roll some dice you know nothing beats standing there with a friend and actually just throwing dice you know physically rather than digitally anyway that's me done for another video i would love to get your thoughts and feedback on some of the stuff i've mentioned maybe you've read some more stuff um again i've only just took a little glance at this um i would like to see what your likes are what your dislikes are what changes do you love what changes do you hate potentially um i'm really interested to see what's going on with the law in this codex i haven't seen really anyone cover the law and um, hopefully there's some changes i know from the ninth edition that they never pushed the story onwards but it may be you know some like new political things are arising with space marines maybe there's some new chapters introduced some new law for chapters that are already established and all that kind of stuff maybe you know new threats that are popping up against the space marines and all that kind of funky stuff so yeah that's what i'm really looking forward to um and hopefully um, um next week um i can show all that off on like a stream and do another video and uh, we can all go through it then anyway again enough waffling see you in a bit have a great day enjoy yourselves and bye bye